May the grace, mercy, and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you now and always. You may be seated. Please uh, bow your heads with me as we go to our Lord in prayer, and we pray. Almighty and most merciful God, we give thanks to you for this day and each day that we have to come into your house, to enter into your presence and worship and praise of your holy name. Help us each day to look forward to opportunities that we may join in communion with you, knowing that you are ever with us, that you dwell with us, leading us, guiding us, and directing us. Lord, we pray all things in the name of our Savior, who has come, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The other night, I had opportunity with Carla and Jacob to attend the Chamber Singers Annual Christmas Concert. I know that some of you were there to also enjoy the beautiful music. Uh, this year, they did something a little different, and as Barbara had mentioned, as Anita had mentioned, uh, they had a little bit of a sweater contest. They first had those with the most beautiful sweater stand up, and they, we had a little vote, and the, the, that person won an award. Well, next, they had the funniest sweater stand up. It was kind of humorous, actually, because there were only two people who stood up, and they both had the same sweater on. Uh, well, they kind of uh, gave it to only one person. The third was the, well, they called it the ugliest sweater. I prefer to call it the tackiest sweater. Only one person stood up. It was, they both, of course, received the award. But either way, no matter what, it seemed like everyone was having a good time. Even, if, even the person with the tackiest sweater, the ugliest sweater, they were having a good time. We were listening to good music, there was laughter, there was singing together. And isn't that one of the joys of the Christmas season? It's the coming together with friends and family. It's the opportunities we have to celebrate gathering together as, well, the people of God here in worship, gathering together with those we love. Maybe some of you are looking forward to having family travel from afar, maybe hundreds of thousands of miles to, to come to see you. Maybe you're planning to travel for hundreds or thousands of miles to see loved ones. Maybe you're just looking forward to a quiet Christmas where maybe it's just the immediate family coming together. A lot of us, though, look forward to that gathering together. You know, one of the spots that I really enjoy gathering together is on Christmas Eve. You know, there's maybe not as much laughter, but there's a certain warmth to the church. Not, Not just because, because the candles are lit, but it seems like everybody is coming together. It, it seems like people sing a little louder. People oh, you know, pay a little closer attention to the words. They know the story after all. As we sing Silent Night, as we sing Joy to the World, our hearts are just warm with the presence of God. We look forward to that, don't we? Sadly, I, I don't know that we always enjoy God's presence so much. Maybe sometimes it doesn't seem like he's as present in our lives as he does on nights like Christmas Eve or mornings like Christmas Day. Maybe sometimes in our lives it seems like he's altogether absent. Wouldn't it be nice if God would dwell with us just as he dwelled with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? If he would sit down with us and just lay out the plan for us. Help us to understand the way life was, the, the way life should be. Help us to decide what is the appropriate treatment, where we should spend our money, what we should invest in, how we should handle a conflict that arises. Maybe we think about how nice it would be if God could just whisper in our ear to make this choice, to reassure us that maybe we feel a little lonely during the Christmas season, but we're never alone. Maybe it'd be nice if he could whisper in our ears that there will be peace on earth again. As the angels foretold, peace on earth, good news to men. We look forward to, we would really enjoy those types of things, wouldn't we? If God would just be present in a pinchable way, a way that we could actually see and touch him. And imagine Isaiah as he was writing, well, his whole book, but really the text for today. Perhaps he had the same feeling. As he wrote this book, he was thinking of himself, and he was thinking about those people who, well, he was writing too. He was, he was thinking, thinking about, about the fact that, that it seemed these days all they heard were the obscure voices of prophets. Maybe they came together and they talked about the way he used to be when he came with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The way that Moses saw him, well, not face to face, but saw him on the mountain. The way that David seemed to know the will of God and have a heart after him. Perhaps they didn't sit in front of a fireplace in nostalgia, but perhaps around fires, without their own homes, assimilated as part of the culture, the Babylonian culture. 
thinking about what it would be like if God was still present. Seems like Isaiah was thinking about that as well. As he wrapped up our text today, I want, to listen, I want you to listen again to his words. Go on, go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not, say to the cities of Judah, behold your God, behold your God. He wanted the people of God there in, the, in his presence to know that God was still with them, even in the midst of their dark hours, that God was there. John, 800 years later, says it this way, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Familiar words for each of us as we think of the Christmas story, but seems so foreign to us. It seems like it's constantly in a fight to keep Christ in Christmas. To make, make Jesus, Jesus the, the reason, reason for the, the season, season, as so often the cliches go. It, it seems like we have to pull aside the toys for young and old. That we have to put aside the politically correct season's greeting. That we have to somehow find a space in our schedule to make time for the presence of God. It seems like sometimes it's so hard as we try to see God at work, to see his hand in action. And this is why we turn to Isaiah, chapter 40. Because we see a man, a community, a world that was turned upside down. A world that did not see God at work. A world that, that did not know themselves as the people of God anymore. But maybe more as a people without name. A people who had no homeland. And then Isaiah writes those words. Behold your God. Behold your God. At work among you, even in the midst of this world. Behold your God. Even in a foreign land, he is with you. Behold your God, even when things are not going your way. When life is not going as you planned it, he is with you. Behold your God. He is present with you in the word. And behold your God because he is present with you today. How often do we take for granted that Jesus himself said that he is the word made flesh. When we come together and worship in the house of the Lord, he is truly present with us. When we come around the baptismal font, washing a child, welcome them into the family, whether they're three months old or 93 years old. The Lord is present with the water. Whenever we kneel before the altar of the Lord, eating of his body and drinking of his blood, we behold that our Lord is present with us, that he is there. Behold, your God is always present with you. And as the people of God, we are called to live as if he is, not only here in the church, but everywhere we go, to be Christ to our community, to be Christ in Christmas in those who are lonely and depressed and downhearted, to be Christ in our community where people do not know God, who are lost and dying, to be Christ, the presence of God, to those we know who are hurting. As I told the kids in 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, he asked, actually asks it as a question, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. We were bought with the price of Jesus Christ present with us. We are bought with the price of our Lord who took on human flesh as a baby in Bethlehem, who walked among us, who gave his life for us, who rose again and in a very real way ate and drank with his disciples and dwells with us now. Notice how Paul put it though. We're not just temples, individuals out there. But we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the people of God together, united in his house, united to go forth with his word. And it's important that we do. Because not everybody looks forward to Christmas. Not everybody looks forward to Thanksgiving or Easter. Not everybody looks forward to the holidays because they know that 
when the holiday comes, they'll recognize that missing chair at the table, the individual who should be there. Some of you know this all too well. Some of you, as you think about the holidays, you know that you have loved ones who are hundreds or thousands of miles away, and well, this year they just they can't make it again this year. So maybe it'll be a quiet house for Christmas. Some of you, you're, you're just hoping your kids or your grandkids will take five minutes out of their schedule to, to call you. You know that they have their own family, but just a word that they love you, that, that they still care about you, that they, they know you're there, and maybe ask you a little bit about how life's going. And what about you? What about you? Are the holidays days of joy? Overwhelming joy, looking forward to the coming of our Savior's birth, his return to us? Or is it hard to see past those toys on the shelf, past all those things going on in your life? Hard to see past the season's greetings to see Christ with you. For many of us, even as Christians, it is hard at times, isn't it? To recognize the presence of Christ. But Isaiah reminds us, behold, behold your Lord who is always with you. Behold your Lord who even when you cannot see him, that you know that he is working, that he is with you. If only to bring peace to your heart when nothing else can. If only to bring joy to your heart when it seems like there's been so much sadness. If only to bring hope, knowing that this is not the end. Because that is indeed what Advent season is all about, isn't it? It is about the promise of our Lord, not only celebrating his birth at Bethlehem, but looking forward to his second coming. Don't we look forward with eager anticipation to Christ coming again? Think about a child. Think about Jacob. Last year was the first year he really could rip his presents open, and, and he sure did. He was literally with anticipation and excitement. From one present to the next, he was almost shaking as he ripped the presents open and Maybe some of you know that same joy as you've watched your kids or your grandkids rip open their presents. But the anticipation of seeing the joy on a child's face, the anticipation and the, the, the satisfaction is nothing compared to the promise we have. Before Christ ascended, he gave the disciples this promise. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the place where I'm going. We know that our Lord Jesus, as he promised, that he took on human flesh, came just like the rest of us as a baby in the manger, grew up, worked hard, eventually gave his life in perfect life on the cross, that he rose from the grave, but that he is coming again. That he is coming again as he has ascended into heaven. He is coming again for each and every one of his children. That he is coming again in a very real way, in a pinchable way. Not as if a babe in the manger again, but coming in all his glory and all his honor. Coming riding on the wings of angels as he promises in Matthew chapter 24. Coming to call each of us his children home. The hope we have in Advent is the hope we have throughout the year. That Christ is not only present this day, that Christ is not only present in this season, that Christ is present in every day, in our hearts and in our lives. That Jesus is not merely the reason for this season, but he is the reason for every season of our life. The hope that we have as we look forward to the last day, when we receive the greatest gift of all, joining with him in life eternal. May God bless you with the sure hope that he is present with you now and always. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have come into our world, that you have taken on human flesh, that you have paid for our sins, but most of all, we thank you that you are coming again to call us home as your children. Help us each day to recognize your presence with us, to know that even when we feel lonely, 
when we're hurting, when we feel lost, that you are there. May you always be our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love. May we not only hear your words, receiving the assurance of your presence with us, but may we be the presence, your presence, in our community, in our world, in our families. Help us to be the voice of love and compassion, even around the tables where sometimes arguments begin. Help us to be your voice of peace and passion in our world when we see those who are less fortunate, the downtrodden and the despairing. Help us to be your presence to those who are lost in this chaotic world, knowing that there is hope and peace that comes in you. Help us to know your presence in our hearts, that one day we will join you in life eternal. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, who is truly present with us. Amen.